The moment I uploaded the previous Avast free antivirus review, one thing was immediately clear to me is that what you guys wanted to see next. So by popular demand, here is the review of Avira free antivirus 2016. Over the years, Avira is one of the few products that hasn't really changed much. And I'm not sure if that's necessarily a good thing. For example, their user interface, they've upgraded it several times and added some visual elements, but they've kept the layout the same. And honestly, I do not like their user interface very much. I know it's a matter of preference and I respect yours, but I just don't like their layout. And uh, the settings or configuration as they like to call it, this is probably one of my least favorite layouts for settings. It can be confusing, it doesn't give you uh, a lot of options, and it's just an aging interface. But if you look carefully, they do have most of the basics covered. You can still control all your basic stuff like action on detection, you can add your exceptions, you can uh, even modify the heuristic level. But there's nothing new here, to be honest, in the last few years. The only new thing that they've added is their cloud service which I haven't seen in action a lot, but they have their real-time protection cloud and um, it uploads files to Avira and gets it scanned. Well, you know how a cloud works. Apart from that, they do have some system protection, which is just limited to protecting the host file. I'm sorry, but that's not enough these days. So in the zero day department, just by looking at the settings, you can say that this is lacking. They haven't really kept up to date in terms of the latest technology to deal with zero day malware. But enough said, we don't really want to make too many assumptions before we even get the test done. But one thing that has always been good about Avira is their great signatures. They've always been excellent in terms of signatures. One of the best free antivirus in terms of detection ratios, no doubt about that. So today we'll see um, how it holds up to that reputation and whether or not it can dispel that notion that it's bad against uh, unknown threats. So we have a few links here and after that we're going to have some files and we'll give it a full test. So here we go. Here's the first link. There's no web blocker blocking it, so it's allowed to download. But it says it can't be downloaded. That may be because Avira might have blocked it. Let's go and see. Do we have something in quarantine? Not really. But as you can see, it says malware found. So, hmm. So here's a real time protection alert. However, I didn't see any pop up for that. I'm not liking the user interface very much, but we'll proceed. Here's the second URL. And it seems like that was blocked too. We'll just have to, um, you know, check it out in the events. There you go, another detection malware found. The next one's dead. Let's try this one out. Autorun.exe, familiar name, and it's blocked. Let's just make sure. Yep, we have four threats blocked. So here's the fifth malware item. And it seems like it's blocked too. All right, another event there. Let's go ahead and run this. It's ridiculously small, um, obviously malware, and seems to have been blocked. Hmm. No, not really. So it was allowed to load. How did I miss that? All right, so this is some kind of adware, turbo games, pop-ups. I don't like this. If I remember right, I think um, the virus toll detection for this file was around 12 engines or something like that, or maybe 10 engines. So whether or not you want to consider this as malware, 
kind of depends on you, but looking at the pop-ups and the fact that it's already started downloading something, I probably wouldn't like it. But again, as I said, kind of depends on you. It's adware. And uh, that's what's like 80% of the threats we face these days. So I'd probably count that as a miss. But, I mean, obviously it's not as bad as missing a piece of ransomware or something of that nature. So we'll continue. Once again, I guess another threat was blocked. Yes, it was. Now here's the last file. It's fairly large. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven detections. This uh, program is running in the background. I'm going to do a scan with Malwarebytes and Hitman Pro, and uh, if they don't detect it, I guess I'll just let it pass. Otherwise, we'll count it as a miss. I mean, that's how we do things over here, so that's what we'll do. But I just gave you guys the information so that you know. Now the last threat seems to have been blocked as well. So other than this uh, annoying program, Adware, PUP, whatever, Avira did a pretty good job with their signatures. I didn't see any pop-ups, I didn't see any cloud pop-ups. So we'll continue. First of all, I have to do my second opinion scans to verify. So let's take a look at the second opinion scan results. So it turns out our second opinion scanners, Hitman Pro and Malwarebytes, do not find anything on the system. And I did upload the file to Barstool again. The last analysis I checked was um, 10 out of 54, and now it's dropped to 9 out of 54. And if we take a look at the detections, they're from Baidu, Dr. Webb, Kaspersky, McAfee, Gateway Edition, 360, and Super Anti-Spyware. AVG gives it a clean, so does Avira, as we just saw. Bitdefender also gives it a clean, that's interesting. Not detected by Komodo, not detected by MCSoft or F-Secure, not detected by Gdata. So a lot of uh, big engines out there that do not detect this. So, well, I guess I'll just call it clean. But hey, this is an interesting question. So. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. This is actually something I would like to know. Would you want your antivirus program to block files like this? Or do you think that it should be up to you? Let me know in the comments below and uh, I think it will lead to a great discussion. Moving on with the review, I'm just going to exit this. Keeps running in the background, but if I can guess which ones exit... Oh, there you go we were successfully able to quit it, but a novice user probably wouldn't be. So now we're going to disable real-time protection and grab our malware samples. Because we love malware over here, don't we? That's why we have this beautiful icon for that. And as you can see, we have 500 items. All of these are probably malicious. It's a nice list. And uh, now that we know that they're there, let's see if Avira knows. So I'll do the context menu scan. Avira does have a really fast scan, so that's uh, something to note. Now it wants us to select an action for all of these, so I'm just going to select all and delete. Because I don't want any of this on my computer. And the malware removal is kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it takes a little bit of time, but in general, it's probably moderate to fast. Also, I'd like to note that in terms of resource usage, Avira is also usually pretty light. So around uh, five to 10 minutes later, their Luke file walker, that's what they like to call it. Basically, their scan engine completed its removal process, so I'm going to hit end and let's see how many files we have left. So it turns out we have only two items. Wow. That means a detection ratio of 99.6%, which is very impressive. As I mentioned at the beginning, 
Avira do have a track record of um, absolutely astounding signatures. So it's not really a surprise. Now let's see what they can do with these couple of files. Maybe, you know, they might not even be capable of inflicting any damage to the system because there are just so few of them. Maybe Avira has deleted the payloads inside them, but it's worth a try. So let's go ahead and re-enable the real-time protection. And once I can see the umbrella again, we can start executing these files. As you can see, it says our computer is secure. So now let's run these files and see if uh, any damage is done to the system. Hmm. As I was suspecting, cannot find some DLL, so it's not going to work. Now the second one does run and it created a new file, which is a zero kilobyte file. That's interesting. I'm not sure if it did anything else or if it just uh, failed and terminated. Let's go ahead and open uh, kill switch. I don't see uh, any weird stuff running. Everything seems normal here. If we go ahead and open process monitor, I don't see any suspicious malware activity. It's just uh, service host and Avira for the most part. I guess the system's clean, but well, you can't just take my word for it. So I'll do the second opinion scans and I'll be back with the results. Malwarebytes does not find anything malicious, but Zamana came up with a bunch of stuff, but it turns out it has actually flagged some of the homepage modifications that Avira has made, and I find this kind of hilarious, and it is something we're going to encounter a lot in the future as, you know, antivirus companies start getting more and more aggressive with cross-funding. We're going to see some antiviruses flag some other antiviruses uh, behavior as malicious and vice versa so well that's going to be what should i say interesting anyway apart from that there's uh, nothing really that uh, zamana found once again this is a false positive this is just uh, one of my malware analysis tools it finds the malicious 120.exe but it's basically a useless dead file sitting on the hard drive so no infections no i don't want to apply actions and hitman pro pretty much found the same thing but something i did find interesting is that uh, hitman pro did not classify this uh, program as malicious once it was installed but the setup itself is classified as risk square so that's something to keep in mind I don't know what's the deal here, why um, if the setup is riskware, why the installed files are not flagged. Maybe it's because, I don't know, once it's installed it's safe. <laughs> the setup is the one that behaves in a malicious way. Um, that's, that's kind of funny. But anyway, coming back to the test results. Avira did a wonderful job as you saw, it kept the computer safe, we don't have any active threats on the system everything's nice and clean and running smoothly so kudos to Avira for that but there's a big but here and I don't mean the one at your back <laughs> oh my goodness I made such a silly joke anyway 99.6 percent that was the detection and it's it's great and on our sample size of 500 that meant we only had two files that we had to run or that were still a threat but on a larger scale 99.6 percent could also leave out thousands of samples because thousands of new malware is created every day and there are loads and loads of different variants out there so when you take everything into consideration the 99.6 which looks like yeah, pretty much it got them all at this point on a larger sample size it may leave 20 items 100 items 200 500, 1,000, more than that, depending on the sample size. Even with great detection, there is all there are always going to be threats that will be missed. So if you're hit by one of those, you know, unknown new threats, um, 
I really don't think Avira is going to be able to protect you. The reason being they don't have any comprehensive intrusion prevention system or behavioral blocking. You know, I, I'm just not convinced. Keep in mind though, this is a great signature based solution. If you can uh, pair it up with the firewall, it will work very well as long as you can tolerate the user interface. Maybe you like the user interface, I don't know. As a standalone program, I don't feel confident enough to recommend it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Do you feel confident running something like this as a standalone product? That is something that I'd be interested to know. And uh, we already had a few interesting topics. So get active in the comments and like this video if you did. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay informed, stay secure.